Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Get Your Chocolate On. <laughs> I'm Dr. Makeda Anthony Kemp. She is not a doctor. I'm Dr. Amanda Kemp, and welcome. This yes. show is awesome. sponsored by Racial Justice from the Heart. And what's our theme this week, sister? Cultural appropriation, because it's never too soon to learn, or never too late to learn, I guess is the word. And we got a lot of stuff to go through. I've been doing my research because I don't have much to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been curious about it personally, and she's been working, so me and her, we're just going to have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. oh, one thing I want to say is okay. that um, we're coming close to, to Halloween here in the United States. And so you might be wondering about those costumes, you know, which ones you should you should put on or you should let your kids wear. So I hope that this conversation is coming ahead of that. <laughs> yes, I think it is. Okay. <laughs> so I have a kind of a dicey question. It's not too dicey. You can answer it if you want to or you can uh -oh. tell me, okay, that's inappropriate. I didn't know. I don't think it's too bad. So we have, what is your <laughs> least favorite cultural appropriated costume? <laughs> my, least, uh, my least favorite? Yes. The one that really grinds your gears when you see it. Oh, I have to say um, red face, black face. That kind of stuff. Anything where they're like physically changing their skin tone. Yes, and um, like you know how the the Washington they used to be the Washington Indians. Yeah, and they really made their mascot skin like yes, bright red. Yes, yeah. and now they're the Washington football team. <laughs> Is that what they changed they the name changed to? It to? Well, because they Washington football team. <laughs> well, they obviously want to do fi uh, focus groups and other stuff to think about. Well, because they represent Washington. The Greater Washington D.C. area. So what oh, should I thought their it was Washington be? State. I think it's Washington State. I don't think. No, we wouldn't know. <laughs> we are such non-football people. Oh my god. Maybe someone knows they can comment. Is it the Washington State Redskins oh my gosh. or the Washington? By the way, Makeda, we're supposed to go live on the event page. I did. Oh, okay. Oh well, I think I did. <laughs> no. Well, wait, maybe you did. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, maybe you did. So I think. Uh, so my that's my that is the one that makes me grip my teeth is that yeah. thing because it's it's you know blackface has a whole history in the United States of really being used to dehumanize black people. True. And to justify enslaving us or to justify segregating us and that kind okay. of business. So they are thank the you, DC Melinda, Red Deanna, <laughs> Marissa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We kind of, we kind of, we got to got, you know, we got a little scared there. But what I tell people about Get Your Chocolate On, we should not be your main news source. No, 100% not. <laughs> Most of the things I say are somewhat false. <laughs> somewhat sketchy. But, you know, what I find, I'm sad to hear actually that it's the DC Redskins or it was that because I feel like. How many people in D.C. have actually seen or talked to a Native American person? I don't think that that population is very high in the metropolitan area compared to like maybe the Arizona um, or like Washington State even you're more over. But right. it's really just like, I mean, and it's the capital of the U.S., which is just yeah, ironic so, as frick. Yeah, so it's that whole thing about, well, for me, it feeds into this narrative that uh, Native Americans or Indigenous or Native people are gone. So now we can like create throwbacks to them, even yeah. though, quote, we or the colonizing genocidal forces killed them yeah. or destroyed culture. But now let's put on their stuff I mean, as a team. That's why it's like, it's almost gruesome. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like ironic in the worst possible way yeah. like a really sick joke and right. nobody we let it go on for like right. a very long time right yeah right 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 or yeah. or the redskins people owners resisted the criticism because they definitely have been getting uh critical feedback i mean you can't blame them i mean it's probably about rebranding them for most yeah. of the stuff you know just paying to totally reset your franchise yes which, whatever. But that's what you have to yeah, do. Yeah, I think when it's you, worth you know, it. When you way. benefit from genocide, hello. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's not like, too hard. It's a small price to pay. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the meat. Uh-oh. The Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, oh that's God. true. Yeah. Two? <laughs> the Cleveland Indians. Oh, and then they change it to the Browns. Oh, the Indians are baseball and the Browns are football. Wait, are you serious? In Cleveland, yeah. So the there's Cleveland. all of these other teams that still haven't changed their names? Yeah. 
yeah. the Redskins were just the most offensive. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. fine. <laughs> I mean, not fine, but we'll. Well, we're glad. Up. We're glad the name change happened. Yes. Yeah, so let's get into the meat and talk about the differences uh -oh. of appropriation and appreciation. Great. And I really think. Cultural appreciation is much more complex than cultural appropriation, and that's why we've seen so many issues with it, especially in a place like America where we're considered a melting pot type of situation. Yeah. And I also, when I was thinking about it, I thought, wow, like the concept of freedom in America, that, that's in the culture of patriotism, mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just, mm -hmm. it's been so harmful to the minorities or the, what do you call it? Yes, marginalized groups in America. Mm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. the way that you someone can say, well, you can't tell me what costume I can or cannot wear. Mm. You know, that's my right. Mm. And that in America has, the it's my right thing has been a source of so many issues. And a lot of it, it just comes from that, like, selfishness, that inner ego. I mean, you know it already. Yeah, so yeah. I just had to point that out because, you know, I don't think, I mean... We knew it wasn't really about freedom when they used the words in the Constitution and there weren't even free people in the country. Yeah. So it was just... Well, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That was the Declaration of Independence. And they literally wrote those words... That's what I'm saying! Without well, even thinking, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Are we talking about indigenous and African people? Yeah. You yeah. know, they just thought, well, when we say men, everyone knows we mean white men. Yeah. And yeah. that's very telling. Yeah, that it is sense. very telling. So we were talking about today, I was saying to Makeda, let's talk about the difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation because I think it is important to appreciate other cultures that are not your own, to learn about them, and it's to explore key. them. It's key to actually like um, creating a melting pot environment where it's easy for cultures to mix together without there being clashes or fear, anything like that. Mm. So... I have, a, I have cultural appropriation down as something, power has a big um, part in that. It's if a group in a more power takes something from a more marginalized group, profits off of it, whether it be like entertainment value or literal money, mm. and um, doesn't give credit. Or And the one thing I found interesting, okay, I forget the actress's name, I was doing some research. The movie Ten, do you know... Um, Oh yeah, and with there was Bo Derek. Yes, and, and they her called husband, them John Derek. They called them the Bodhi braids, I think. Oh, because she wore she's, this is a blonde white woman wearing uh, single braids. Yeah, Sing, um, singles. Yeah, she had yeah the like cornrow tops and singles with the bottom. I think. Oh, is that what it was? Was it cornrows? Too. I think she it didn't was, have beads. It was long though. Yeah, but, yeah, true. And then uh, they had called them like the Bodhi braids afterwards, and they were saying white women were paying to get them done. Like three hundred to five hundred dollars was the price range for those. Whereas you know black girls were still being face called ghetto for having braids. I think until even like my middle, right after my middle school days. That is kind of when the like stigma stopped towards braids because more celebrity black women started wearing braids. Mm -hmm. But I remember people in middle school because I used to think like, well, should I get braids? Because, you know, it would be nice not to do my hair. And people were like, oh, no, don't get braids. It's going to look ratchet on you. It's not going to look good. And I just remember, I always had such a little stigma towards them. Until I got them, I felt really pretty. <laughs> yeah, I remember the stigma. Because okay. I remember wanting you to get braids. <laughs> but that whole thing about the Bodhi braids and, you know, uh, you know, um, white women um, taking on a hairstyle or a cultural form of black women. Um, and you brought the fact, well, it's my individual right. And and I guess what I say to people is um, when you're thinking about whether or not you're appropriating or appreciating, think about, first of all, how do the people who originate that art form feel about other people using it? Mm -hmm. And because um, if you really appreciate the art form, you got to appreciate the people. Okay. Right? I have a point about this. Okay, go for it. I think the part of cultural appropriation that really like makes it sting a little bit for the people whose culture is being stolen is that there always tends to be a separation the, between the admiration of the culture and the people themselves. Mm. And often the culture is more admired the more separated you are from the people. Mm. Oh, wow, Makeda, that was a bunch of things. Well, wow. That, so it's it was, like the more distance you have from it, the more you admire it. But, you know, we use terms like exotic, 
exotification, yes, exoticize one. it, kind of like, ooh, you want that thing over there that is nothing like you. Exactly. Mm. But you don't want it enough where it would be, you know, into your... Right. Or where you lose all the privileges and domination you have. Yes. <laughs> And then and fully it. become it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's where I was, again, it really stings because, like, seeing white girls with cornrows and knowing, oh, this is a person that would probably <laughs> approach me or treat me the way she would another white girl. Whether or not that's true, it's just how I feel about it. It just, it kind of hurts a little bit. Mm. Hmm. I, um, that's how chocolate labs getting their chocolate on in the background. Um, I want to just hit up this phrase about melting pot being problematic so because you used it and I just want to ask you about it so do you feel like it's problematic or how do you feel about the term I do think it's a little problematic but I also haven't come across um, a better term to describe America maybe like <laughs> a compartmentalized pan <laughs> a large skillet with a section with subdivisions <laughs> But, I Some mean, people say a salad bowl. Uh, yeah, cause, you know, the tomatoes, they still yeah, pop they, out of the salad. They don't right. melt together. They don't all mush in. I think that actually makes sense. But yeah. I agree because, I mean, the melting pot, it made sense when we were taught sort of this, like, different idea of America where it was accepting immigrants were coming in and just becoming a part of society. And, you know, that's what you picture. Oh, they're being mixed into the pot until they're, you know... American American. I was going to say, and that's, until they're what? Yeah, okay. They're <laughs> mixed up on in this pot until they, they're white. So. Until they're white. <laughs> and if they can't be white, then they just stay on the bottom of the pot. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, let's be real. Um, one of the interesting things I, I've seen, I, I taught this American Studies class once, mm -hmm. where the whole thing, the whole premise of the class, and only one student got what I was doing, and this is a, a, uh, a white male student from Hawaii who was pretty conservative, but at least he was smart. <laughs> and what he said was, at the end, he goes, in his, in his evaluations of me, he said, I do not agree with how you organize the class, which is basically that everybody who came into America has to confront blackness and whiteness. Wherever you are, you have to confront it. And what people tend to do is to veer away from blackness because there's so much uh, pain, discrimination, oppression over there. <laughs> Although there's so much juiciness too, like you were talking about, people want some of that juice. But um, if you want to, quote, get ahead, you got to move towards whiteness. And in our that's country, true. that's Anglo whiteness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be Anglo. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, which is unfortunate because, you know, the best food is not Anglo food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You're always hating on their food. That's true. It is one of my favorite Ooh. things. Okay. So we want to see. Can we see what other people are saying in the chat? Because yeah, we got yeah, yeah. quite a few chatters here. Uh, Melting pot reminds me of the phrase, I, I don't, don't see, see color. <laughs> color blindness. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good true. way to put it. Yeah, yep. I, we were just learning in college why that phrase was problematic, which I liked. Yeah. No one had taught me about it before. And I think uh, salad, they like salad because it's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. Erasure. A lot of folks are melting. They're losing their individuality. Very that's true. That's another great point. Very true. And if you think about, like, I'm have a, I have a pot of lentils on, and they are vegan. Oh, no, I have butter. But... <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I'm putting stuff in there, but it's all getting mushed together. It actually isn't that a visually appealing. No, because all the colors just kind of go to whatever. Yeah. Unless you plan the colors of the lentils before you put them in. I then you know. can get a nice purple or something. I know. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about cultural um, appreciation then. Excellent. I was just thinking so, we should move there. What? Okay, so from what I gathered from... Um, what I was reading, I gather cultural appreciation is a bit more complex because you have to take more time to get to the root of what you're appreciating, why you're appreciating it, who it came from, and there's like whole histories to some of these things. So I don't. My question for you was, cultural appreciation. It seems like difficult, and it seems like some of the steps you have to take to do it properly. You can't necessarily display, right? And then so people could accuse you, oh, you're you're appropriating, you're appropriating. It's like, I actually did the work, you just haven't seen it. You know, yeah. it makes it almost True. 
not in my case, but you could see it being viewed as not worth it. Yes. Even going through the process. Right. What do you, do you have any recommendations? Well, first of all, I just want to acknowledge that what you said is true. It's like the work that you do beforehand, other people can't see that before you, uh, I don't know, before you put on that turban or before you came on stage with the drum, that you did um, all kinds of study, you know, you traveled, you got permission from the people who originated that, you're part of that religion. Like, for example, um, some people as part of Rastafarianism um, dread their hair. I am not a Rastafari, but I dread my hair. But someone who's white could be a Rastafari, and that's mm -hmm. part of her or his spiritual path, and they've chosen to do that thing, right? And then, but we don't see that. We, we don't know. Why We're just like, why are you, why are you dreading? Exactly. You know? And um, so it does take, I think, clarity and fortitude. Okay, explain fortitude. I know. Like, like strength. Okay, yeah. Like, so if someone comes at you with, why are you doing that? You have to be clear. Well, I'm doing this because um, this is my religion. Or I'm doing this because I fell in love with this instrument or this kind of work, uh, this kind of art. And, um, you know, and I went and studied it and, you know, and I was given permission by the originators of it. And, you know, 10, 20, whatever percent of what I do here is actually going back to the community. Yeah. Who, who created this. So, and I really feel that's a challenge for me. I'm, I'm saying to, it's easy to call out white people on cultural appropriation, but I think all of us can be thinking about how are we giving back to the source of a piece of culture that we, or a tradition that that we find beautiful or that we're using. Okay, now what about if the tradition you're coming from <laughs> is something that is well off? Because in that very case, like, you would do these things to prevent cultural appropriation, right? But part of cultural appropriation is the power dynamic. Right. That you are in a place of higher power than the people you're taking yeah. it from. What if those people are actually in a higher place of power than you, but you are still borrowing their culture? Are you talking, for example, about something like, I'm so sorry about this, guys, and community. Are you talking about something like ballet or i mean what do you mean by a culture that is more um, okay elevated than me you know okay one mind. thing that came to mind was yoga like it's mm -hmm. a really established culture where it's come from and it's not like india yes mm -hmm. <laughs> i didn't know much i didn't want to say <laughs> okay no, but i just want to make sure we clear india yeah, yeah. yeah and i would say in general i don't picture the indian population oh, God. When you I don't know if this is when yeah. you do yoga. Yeah, no, oh. no, no. I don't picture them as a marginalized group inside the United States. No, not in, in outside of it in India, where the yoga originated from. Oh, okay. So you mean inside of India, which is a huge subcontinent. I know. The that's people why I'm like who, the Indian no, no, no. Population. Let's start it. Let's just <laughs> try to break million. it apart. So, okay, this huge subcontinent, but we know that there is this thing called yogis and. And yogis were these wise people who, who investigate. I only been saying this because I did do a yoga teacher training, so I have a little bit of knowledge here. I'm not, nice. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, you know, come out my, you know, what. So these people, through the wisdom of their self-inquiry uh, and the teaching of others, there is a whole body of literature uh, of wisdom that they... Uh, evolved over time mm -hmm. inside of the Indian subcontinent. I don't know exactly where. And I don't know what their class position was relative to the people who they were teaching in India. So I can't speak to it on that level. Um, I do know that um, one of the people who we recommended that folks check out, um, Susanna, Bar I think it's Bartarki, um, you know, she has traveled to India. She is of Indian parentage. And... Um, and others I've met of that parentage who practice inside of uh, inside of yogi traditions, um, they they aren't saying that oh this is only for Indian people because those people who created the tradition mm -hmm. they wanted to enlighten humanity. Okay. They had a humanitarian impulse. So that's different. So they wanted it to spread, but the people who are talking about who are talking about uh, appropriation are concerned that the way yoga is coming to the United States has mainly been through 
European Americans and more and more European I middle see. and upper class Americans. So, so it's like them teaching it and sort of if they're not teaching their students the roots and things yes. like that, that's where it becomes a problem, especially yes. if they're profiting off of it. Right. I right. can see that and I can yeah. see it's kind of like, like you know, we have, especially along the East Coast, a lot of African hair braiders. And it'd be like, I don't know if like a white person started a hair braiding business and was African hair braiding. It's the same kind of like, I don't know about it. Mm. Yeah, that's how I picture white people teaching kind of a yoga class. Mm -hmm. And But you don't see a lot of Indian Americans teaching yoga class. No, no. And there's, there's lots of other differences between how yoga is taught in the United States and how it's taught and who is taking yoga in India. Um, so, um, so I think the, the, the deal is that you want to be responsible, you know, and, um, check into when you have a teacher, get into that lineage, or if you're, if you're practicing, um, I think even if you're the yoga studio where you're practicing in doesn't have awareness, you can ask questions, you can suggest that they that they honor the lineage? Have they thought about honoring the lineage? Um, it can be a verbal honoring in addition to a financial one. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I don't think we need to be like, it's 100% or it's nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. then you, that's well, what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, I can't do anything because it might be wrong. It's actually probably really hard to do something in the United States that doesn't have some amount of um, colonization, genocide, enslavement. I know. Built into a patriarchy. And that's why I kind of think maybe the key to maneuvering through both of these, appropriation and appreciation, is at least when you're approaching people about it, when people, yeah, we'll start with when you're approaching people about it, um, tr don't assume they're coming from a bad place immediately. Like you say, like, white people with dreadlocks you don't really know where they're coming from you can look at them and judge them but you you really don't know and it's like if you were to say something don't be hostile about it from the jump yeah that would be my advice and that that, that i have to say beautiful windstorm here yeah, it's nice outside um i have to say that is that is probably how i come at stuff i don't <laughs> i don't really want to come from judgment first because in part because um, have you noticed how your body feels when you're judging? Mm. I mean, my body feels <laughs> bad. And I start, I mean, soon after I'm done judging whoever I'm judging, I definitely judge myself. It's yeah. like, it wasn't really about the other person. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just saying, right? Just watch, watch your SHIT. <laughs> Watch yes! Watch Reel it. it in sometimes. Watch How it. How many times a day do you project onto other people things you are thinking? Unspoken. Yes. At least I know I do. Yes. Alright, let's read some of these comments. Oh, so many comments. Right. Wow. Okay. So yeah. glad you all came. We have a question. Anne-Marie says, What do you think of people using the word tribe often to talk about their groups or cohorts of people? Yeah. Wow. Huh. That, I think that's just another result of colonism, Col colonialism, mm. colonists. Mm. I don't know, but mm. it doesn't sound right to me. Well, I um, I agree. I agree. It doesn't sound right, and I also have used it. So I want to be um, <laughs> I want to be straight with it. Uh huh. And when I use the word, I called. I had something I was calling tribe of the heart. And what I was getting at was trying to get to an elemental before nation states way of um, relating to each other and having it be intimate and human. For me, that's what, see all those positive associations I have with yeah. tribe? Now, I know that Europeans in their work to colonize, steal, enslave, and kill people use the word tribe to mean they're not as good as us. But I actually don't mean that. Mm, and okay. so, but when you use it, um, I'm in danger of people hearing it mm -hmm. with that negative connotation. So I think what I have to do, Anne-Marie, is be prepared to say, this is why I'm using it. Um, and, you know, like I said, you have to have the fortitude because some people may come right back at you with, you know, I don't care why. You know the history cut it out and you got to be like okay or 
Um, I got you, but you know what? My gut tells me this is the word. Mm, okay. You know, it's an interesting approach. It's messy, but isn't it? That's an. It's very complex. Yeah. But I, I can see, because there's a lot of emotions tied to it also, and words, words are very tricky, because everyone hears them differently. Everyone has a different past. One word can really trigger someone in a way that someone else, it just flies right by their ear. And very so, true. I agree with you, and I think at the end of the day, it really comes down to intent. And mm. so, some, someone emailing you and saying, I don't like this, I guess what they're really saying is, what is your intent with this? Mm. Like, where does that come from? Are you trying to you know like move move people into a more open-hearted space by using that word which you were trying to do mm. but in some sense like why does tribe make us feel that way because mm. it's like a clan yeah interesting it's trying to do something like that but you know i think that uh some you know your father who does a lot of work uh, scholarly work on the african continent uh, i could see him very much disagreeing with me um, I don't know if he does or not, but I'm just saying, you can have two different points of view uh, and both still be committed to justice and, you know, equal resources. I like that. <laughs> I know, because sometimes you feel like there's one answer. Isn't it true? It's true. And That's what this whole paper's for. <laughs> the gate is coming up with the one answer. Keep us moving, girl. Okay, girl wait, we you get read so many these. comments. Because I'm wow. like, I got the questions today. She said, Marion says Jews also use tribe, like those in the Old Testament. Oh, okay. See, okay. Yeah. Tribalism may reflect the soci sociological nature of group dynamics. Oh. See, that's the one I'm talking about. I don't know. I try to say village, village instead, instead of tribe. tribe. Village gives you the same yeah. kind of energy. It's true. They're, Many went. Uh -huh. Sorry, I didn't no. call you. <laughs> Have called themselves tribes hundreds of years ago. So white people use that term to describe themselves hundreds of years ago. See, sometimes it's used to describe prehistoric people, mm -hmm. and which is very yeah, um, like denigrating. Man. You think so? Yeah, prehistoric is kind of like we have history; they have prehistory. Oh my god, I don't see it like that. No, I see it. That's tell me like, how you see it. Like my grandma. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying like so way back prehistoric. We still come from them. We're still yeah. directly related to them. Ah, I see what you're saying. It doesn't feel like two separate timelines. Okay. Per se. Okay. But I think this is a good question. Is it cultural appropriation that I have a Black Lives Matter picture as my profile pic? as a white woman. I was actually going to ask you a similar question. Well, I, wait, wait, why am I getting all the questions? Which, what do you think the answer is? Oh, Michaela? I'll answer too. Good. I, I don't think so at all, but I mean, social media is like, a, that I see is a different timeline than reality sort of. And mm. on there, it's kind of like you're showing your support. That's a very common thing nowadays to show mm. your support for, mm. um, oh my God, I don't know why I just forgot the word. Very simple. Causes. Like, causes, literally, yes. Mm -hmm. You're showing your support for the causes that you own. And putting your voice out there is like a big part of showing support nowadays. Yeah. So I really didn't see it as a problem, but I was going to say, so like... I agree with her. Part of black people's culture is, yeah. so, is like protesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> violence, in a sense, suffers of violence, you know, whatever. And... <laughs> Sorry, just looking at your face when I said that. <laughs> but my point is, like, you one could argue that white people protesting with black people is cultural appropriation. But I think it's different because you're choosing to put use your power to uplift those in marginalized groups. Yeah. So it really, I think, no, I wouldn't. Have and it. have you been invited? I mean, were you invited to that party? Were you invited <laughs> to put that uh, and I think that yes, cause up? Everybody yes. is invited. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you. So I think that's another sign about appreciation versus appropriation. Yes. Is accepting an invitation versus um, just walking on something. in. Yeah. 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 Just because you Big know, one. nobody likes, you know, we all get a little sensitive when we feel like, oh, how are you just going to roll up in Exactly. Here? If you have a little decency, it's like, sure, take some, whatever, but you know. Yeah. Okay. Intention and take your responsibility to do the work. Yes, sir. I was invited to join a group of trauma survivors. The name of the group had tribe in it. I wasn't comfortable with it and asked the originators to consider a different name, to which I was told the naming came to her Ooh, through a message from God. It's kind of like what you were saying about the gut and everything. Yeah. So how did you, what was your reaction to that? I guess becomes the question. 
Not yours, but Jenny's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the black flower fist with the icon. I don't think that's bad. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know if, <laughs> if you're putting the black power fist up in your white in your bio, is it a white fist or a black fist? Oh, it has to be a black fist. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Okay, first of all, okay, what if, if it's your fist, though? <laughs> oh, my God. But you have to understand, in America, you have to know what your context is. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm sorry. Okay. This is another thing about appropriation is like, so if you go out here and, you know, where you come from. I just had to make sure the dog wasn't turning. Oh, but. she's crazy. <laughs> but if you, if you, for example, I know some people um, who have gone to West Africa mm -hmm. to study drumming or dance, okay? And um, have a deep relationship with uh, the people who they're studying with, right? And it seems very honorable to me, mm -hmm. okay? Now... But when you come back to America and you put on those clothes and you put those African clothes and you play those instruments and do those movements, um, we have to understand is that how am I being perceived in this context? Whew, context Mama, is important. It's so important. We didn't mention that earlier. We didn't. And that kind of came up everything. because you mentioned the fist. So if you put a white fist up, the context in the United States is going to be white power, which means white domination. Okay, yeah. So that's why I would say you, you okay. need to, you know. That adds up to me. It makes sense. Yeah. So in some ways you have to understand, you almost have to have some background to understand what is the cultural context here. Like you, have, you have to really appreciate the cultural context here is one of white domination. Yes. Like, don't shy away from that. That yes. is very true. <laughs> and I say that because some people are like, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, but I didn't know if they would be offended. And I'm just like... You, I feel like you're talking like this because you don't really get that you live in white domination and you think it's all about, is that individual indefended? Is yeah, that individual, it's... you know, offended? Why can't I just give what I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, my heart is pure. And I'm like, you have to get educated on what this context is. Okay. okay. I went off. She did. Go ahead, well, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't last long on rants. <laughs> She started petting the dog. She's like, mm -hmm, go on. Oh, okay, well, we'll read these and then I'll show you guys a photo that we can talk about real quick. Okay. Okay. So, socialist fist to the fist is a different story. Oh my god. I don't know. I always ask for joining a protest. Oh, invited. I thought so too in debating how to talk about it with my white brother. Um, I left the group, didn't, didn't feel, feel safe. safe. Well. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't comfortable with the response. Interesting. Thank you so much for your complex response. Yes. As a ancestor of European descent, I do not feel comfortable using the word in any longer. Okay, cool. I once got yelled at by a white 22-year-old for using a tan fist emoji that she said <laughs> is brown, but it looked <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, <laughs> people be yelling back and forth. You know, we, we got to stay in the conversation with each other. Exactly. Exactly. Her response was framed in a way that prevented me or anyone from, from questioning it. Cause it okay. Because it came God. from God. Yeah, that's, that's fair, true. Jenny. That, that does to shut down the conversation. A lot. A lot of the time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. Woo. Oh, yeah. My, my picture. Yes. Show your picture. So... At my school, there was a bit of a tizzy going around uh -oh. because oh, there's this picture. You can barely see it. Sorry. It's me and three white girls in, a, in dashikis. Okay. It's blurry, but that's the point. Good. I'm glad it was blurred. <laughs> we don't need to be showing people's faces, Em. Oh, that's they really all got good. sunglasses on, luckily. Okay. But anyways, um, and when they had come back, when we all had come back to our school, which is like a boarding school, a very tight community. And they were getting a lot of shit for it. And now, so it was a particular instance where one boy wore, he had bought a whole suit. Oh, this was in Ghana, by the way. In Africa, we had taken these. Right, clothes. they did a service trip. We did a service trip. And they bought some clothes or were given some things. Yes. Okay. And, I mean, I hadn't had any problems when I came back. I had my African, my kente cloth backpack on. I had a few shirts. It wasn't an issue. And there was a white boy that wore, like, his whole suit. It was, like, a whole matching kente cloth suit, bow tie and everything. <laughs> and he got, like, just shit. And it was kind of like... He wasn't doing anything wrong, technically. So I had sat and thought about, like, in his case, yeah. in these girls' case, yeah. was that cultural appropriation? And I was telling my mom, I feel like 
this picture could get me like caught up if I was like a senator and they just pulled this out of nowhere like oh who's this girl? At a confirmation <laughs> hearings they'd be like oh did you condone cultural appropriation yes, exactly. and you'd be like exactly well, but the point is I kind of thought people at my school's reaction to it they were assuming that Ghanaians were inherently minority or marginalized compared mm. to us in that mm. us going there buying the clothes from locals and mm -hmm. bringing them back was somehow appropriation more than appreciation Ooh. and that's wow. where i was like mm, i actually don't know about that i think everybody was happy with the transaction mm. you know yeah and so that bothered me what were they wearing they were wearing dashikis like um big shirts with african print on it yeah. Very well known for being African. I feel it, like you it, see it and you know. Right. If you Google it, you'll see what dashikis look like. Wow. So, first of all, I imagine, because you grew close to these people, that it must have been hard to, oh. to have them be <laughs> criticized. or. Oh, it was very hard because, you know, in Ghana, they love to see white people in their clothes. Yeah. Exactly. It was like, yeah. And it's we, a cultural context. It was like we met the woman who sewed all of our clothes, all of our suits, um, and things like that. Oh. Google dashiki. Yeah, maybe you could write that into the chat. <laughs> I want to speak to um, this. Um, so, I think, this is where I think context is important. Mm -hmm. So, in the context of the community where you were serving and where people wanted you to buy their stuff and they wanted you to wear it and they felt good when they saw you wearing it, that's a different cultural context than coming back to white domination America, mm -hmm. where African people have been separated from our African heritage and where people feel a sense of like, how dare you? How dare you take this thing that, you know, for hundreds of years you denied me. And now and, you're going to bring it up out here like a style. And I knew how they felt about it. Right. Like, I was just, I had a, a view, a deeper view of the situation because right. I was there with them. And you I wanted there. to empathize with them, of course. I'm yeah, like, and you saw it. And this is where I feel like, um, you know, maybe some discussion before you guys got back with the i'm honestly no we I'm tried saying, to talk about it with the, I'm with the, oh you did with the, adults. with the adults though, no. oh okay with some adults about because you know how is this going to be interpreted why would it be interpreted negatively and um you know when would it be appropriate for someone who is not of african descent uh to wear you know a dashiki that they bought from somebody who liked them and who wanted them to buy it when is that okay to wear and um honestly in the united states I don't Not know. Not often. I, I think in certain I, areas, it might be easier than others. Like maybe, maybe. New York City seems pretty... <laughs> it just seems pretty like a real mixed bowl over there. It is a mixed bowl. You're right. It is a mixed bowl. But maybe I, not in Harlem, but I, I not where you might really <laughs> get yourself in trouble. But um, I wonder about, like you know, there are example New York. There's a huge African population in New York and Chicago, all these other cities. Even Portland, by the way, Portland, Maine. <laughs> Who would have guessed? A lot of Sudanese. <laughs> so, and when you go to like an event and you have something from that culture to bring to the event, I think people might like seeing you with oh, your I kind of think your so dashiki too. or your you know your necklace or your bangle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They might be like, "Oh, you've been in my country." I mean, people like that. Um, so, because we were saying, when could you wear it? We were saying in a context where the people who you're going to be wearing it with are going to recognize it as part of their culture and maybe see you as a friend. Yeah, and see you as appreciating. As appreciating. Culture. Again, the context. The context. If you're in a place where it's appreciating the culture, bring a little something to it. Yeah. Okay. Point. I think we're like, we're, we're working our way through stuff. this. <laughs> All right, let's see. I saw a dozen or so dashiki styled shirts, new ones, at a Goodwill store. My niece was with me, spent a year in Kenya doing USAID work, and said, no way, that's appropriation. Who can wear these? Well, I think we just told you an example of... Don't you think we answered that? Yeah, I think it's not often in America there's opportunities for white people to wear dashikis. Yeah. That's what we came down to. Yeah. Okay. At an example, at a party to um, celebrate the end of our women's group at my work office. Okay, so Wait. that might be appropriate. I don't know what your women's group is made of. 
Oh, oh immigrants okay. from all over the country. Uh huh. Pride to see It's for them, really... and when I'm working with them, yeah, that does make sense. Is that An Andy Marie who's saying that? Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. It does Andy make Marie. a lot of sense. It adds up context. Okay, context. Well, I think those are like our main points today. Context, um, complexity, and <laughs> appreciation. <laughs> Yes, you like that. Yes. I kind of like how you're summing it up. Thank you. <laughs> All okay. right. Well, this has been Get Your Chocolate On. It it's has. sponsored by Racial Justice from the Heart. I'm Dr. Amanda Kemp. I'm Makeda Anthony Kemp. Soon I wish you, would, <laughs> wish you wouldn't say your whole name because we're trying to protect you from those trolls on the internet. But anyway, um, we're really glad you came with us. Thank you for being part of the conversation. And we'll see you next week when we'll discuss the election. Yes, guys. All right. I am Angela Davis signing off. <laughs> <laughs>